Greetings, everyone. Welcome to this Medars Bridge 101 session. So we will be starting the session in next five minutes. So please stay tuned. I hope you are all able to see the screen as well as hear my, my voice. In case uh, if you have any question, uh, if you are not able to uh, hear voice or able to see the screen, please raise your hand or ask in the questions tab. Hello, greetings everyone. Welcome to this uh, introductory webinar, Medas Bridge 101, Introduction to Medas Civil. I am Anuj Asati. I am a technical support engineer at Medas R&D Center, India. And today I will be taking you through uh, various features that are available for bridge design in Medas Civil. So the thing that we are going to cover is introduction to the graphical user interface. Then we will see a few of the modeling techniques uh, in Meta Civil, such as uh, wizard modeling and CAD import and uh, manual modeling as well. Then uh, we will move on to uh, the composite integral bridge demonstration. Yes, the composite integral bridge demonstration. Okay, so this webinar is for uh, people who are very new to Meta Civil. So this will give them a broad idea of what uh, this program is capable of and what are the things that can be done in Meta Civil. Okay, so without any further ado, let's uh, dive in in today's topic. In case if you have any questions uh, during the uh, webinar, uh, kindly use the ask question feature uh, and I will try to answer those questions at the end of the webinar. Okay, so let's start today's session. Now, uh, how we will go through this presentation is, first I will take, give you a brief introduction about Medasable. Then uh, we will see uh, various modeling techniques that are available in the program. Then I will show you uh, how we can generate the model using wizard. Uh, and post that, we will see the analysis and uh, analysis capabilities of the program and in how, how results can be interpreted from the program. Then we will move on to the design features. And at last, we will, I will give you a demonstration uh, using PSC Composite Integral Bridge. Okay, so let's start. So, uh, the first question that comes to mind is what is Meta Civil? So what kind of program is this? So to answer that, Medas is a FEM based uh, software, FEM based 3D software, which is uh, used for structural engineering and specifically for bridge design. Here analysis as well as bridge, uh, as analysis as well as design can be performed. So to sum it up, uh, Medas Civil is an FEM 3D uh, structural engineering software that is oriented towards the analysis and design of bridge projects. Okay, the second question that comes to mind is what kind of uh, bridge projects can be handled by Medas Civil? So answer is starting from the conventional simple type of bridges such as culverts, slab bridges, frame bridges to complicated uh, bridges such as cable state and suspension bridges can be handled in Medas Civil. And not only this, various types of construction techniques such as balance cantilever method, incremental launching method, movable scaffolding methods. So such types of uh, various, such types of construction techniques can also be incorporated in the analysis and design uh, of uh, bridges in Medas Civil. So uh, st uh, starting from basic conventional to complicated bridges, as well as various types of construction methodologies can be incorporated in Medas. Now coming to the application parts. So uh, starting from a basic RCC bridge can be analyzed in the program. 
then most common type of bridge is a pre-stressed concrete bridge psc bridge so uh, here also we have various types so we have uh, a pre-stressing uh, internal pre-stressing external pre-stressing pre-tensioned post-tensioned so all type all these different types of pre-stressing can be simulated in the program then coming to pre-stressed concrete uh, with internal post-tension systems so these can be uh, done in with us not only that we can also model the external pre-stressing in post-tension uh, girders so we can model internal as well as a po external post-tensioning systems in the bridge then uh, another uh, common type of bridge is a pre-stressed composite bridge so in today's wizard demonstration as well as our tsc composite integral bridge we will be going through a pre-stressed com composite bridges so that can be easily handled in the dust then as we have discussed earlier bridges with special types of construction methods so those can be incorporated in the program. So such type of uh, system is movable scaffolding or full staging method. So <clears throat> such type of uh, things can be done. And that too, here we have a special wizards available for these types of uh, methods where uh, we can easily generate the whole model of the structure as well as pre-stressing system for them using these wizards. Another example of this is an incremental launching bridge. Then uh, the balance cantilever bridge, usually constructed at locations where uh, have where they have large valleys or crossings. Uh, so at those locations, we go for a balance cantilever type of bridge. So here also we have wizards available for balance cantilever bridge where uh, the pre-stressing structure and all these things can be generated by the click of a button using a, a FCM wizard. Then uh, we covered pre-stressed uh, composite and pre-stressed bridges. We can also perform analysis and design for steel composite bridges and uh, with autotropic decks as well then uh, arch and truss type of bridges cable state and suspension types of bridges so we have uh, wizards available for suspension and cable state bridge as well now uh, coming to uh, modeling techniques that can be used in midas civil so here um, midas civil provides us a variety of options for uh, modeling and analysis for modeling of bridges so uh, we can approximate our main uh, our structure as a line model or b members so if we have a, a psc composite i girder bridge multi i girder bridge so in that case we can approximate that structure as a, a grillage model or if we have a box girder, single, se single cell box girder. So in that case, we can idealize it as a line beam element. If we want to go for a more, uh, sorry. Yeah, so if we want to go for a more uh, detailed analysis, so in that case, uh, we can go for our plate, full plate modeling. So here also software provides various options. So suppose you have a composite eye girder system. So in that case, you can go for whole deck as plate as well as your girders as plate, or else we can go for our deck as plate, but girders as line elements. Or if you want a girder as plate, web as plate, but the flanges as line elements, so that also can be done. So a lot of liberty is given by the program uh, to model uh, the structure. So we can go with line model, we can go with plate model, 
still if you want to go with solid model so that option is also available in the program so we can go with solid model as well so one of the main usps of the program is its graphic user interface so it is quite intuitive and quite easy to use so this is our main graphic user interface where you can see this main ribbon menu so all the options that are available in the program can be accessed from this main ribbon menu so this menu has been designed as per the workflow of engineer so starting from modeling, which can be done in this structure and uh, node elements tab to property assignment, which can be done in this property tab to a boundary assignment, which can be done in boundary and a load application can be done in the load tab. Analysis can be performed in analysis tab and here results can be taken from result tab. Then we have this PSC tab, which is specifically dedicated for the design of PSC sections. If you want to perform pushover analysis, that can be performed from this tab. Then we can perform design from design tab, as well as then we have some queries and some other tools which are available in query and tools tab. Then we have here uh, the tree menu. So whatever operations that are done in the uh, program are logged in this tree menu. So if you define your nodes, elements, if you define some type of loading or whatever properties that are defined, so all those things can be reflect, are reflected in this tree menu. And um, we can access anything from this tree menu at any point of time, okay? Then we have this message window. So whenever we perform any analysis or if we perform any type of operation, so if there are some assets, errors or warnings so all those things will be reflected in this message window. Okay. so this is the main uh, GUI so once we go to the software so I will uh, give this uh, introduction in more detail to the GUI then there is multi window option display option available so we can do multitasking and create various views of the model in various windows now coming to uh, various section properties that are available in the program. So a wide range of sections can be defined in the program. So starting from normal uh, database a value or a steel reinforced concrete sections to uh, pre-stress concrete tapered and composite sections can be defined. So, <clears throat> sorry. So here uh, you can see uh, these are the section types for PSC. Uh, sections so we can go for psc one cell two cell three cell or n cell can be defined here and if you have any tapered profile for your uh, bridge so that those types of profiles can also be created in mid -Arsenal. then uh, coming to the steel sections so here there are various steel sections available so here we can go for steel composite we can go for steel reinforced concrete section or if we have any combined section we can go for that or we if we have normal i section channel section c uh, angle sections so those also can be defined in the program there are various country codes also available according to which we can select the section from the database for those country codes Now, there might be cases uh, when uh, certain sections are not available in the program. For example, if you want to define a fish belly curve type of a superstructure or some specific type of superstructure, suppose uh, this shape of superstructure. In that case, uh, if, the, if we cannot define in the program uh, as shown here, then uh, we can go for an AutoCAD import in the section property calculator which will generate a section uh, for our analysis and design. So this is a very good feature. You just need to have the cross section drawing in, in the Excel format, which you can import in the section property calculator, which will help us to generate the section file, which we can import in Civil and use it for analysis and design. Uh, we can also draw the section in the uh, SPC, as well as we can import the section from AutoCAD. Now coming to the material properties. 
So here uh, we a wide range of uh, code uh, country codes are available, which we can access as from the drop, uh, which we can access from the drop down. We can select the type of design we are doing, and from the drop down we can select the particular country code according to which there are various database materials available, which you can use for analysis and design. Not only this, we can define the time dependent material properties for uh, rheological properties of concrete, such as creep, shrinkage, and compressive strength. So this also we can define as per various country codes, and based on that, the creep, shrinkage, and compressive strength effect are taken into account for the model. So material nonlinearity can also be incorporated in the structure based on these ready uh, models which are available in the program. We can also define rebars in this uh, in our in our bridge for a particular section. So just we need to select the section from this uh, list, and we can define the reinforcement. Either we can do a list input or we can do a graphical input. Both the options are available. Uh, coming to tendon definition, so uh, there are various ways in which we can define the tendons. So first, we need to define the tendon property based on what is the curvature friction factor, wobble friction factor, ultimate strength, what is tendon area, depth diameter. So all these things uh, we need to take into account, as well as then we can define the tendon if we have uh, various coordinates which are available. So based on the tendon coordinates, we can create a tendon profile or we have an option to use AutoCAD DXF file for the tendons to generate the tendon profile. We have also an option of tendon template using which we can define uh, the tendons for, uh, for based on certain templates which are available. So we will be using those once uh, we go to the demonstration part. Construction stages. So one of the main USPs of Meta Civil is construction stage analysis. So here we can create any type of construction sequence for the bridge. So here you can see an example of a balanced cantilever bridge. Here you have an example of full staging method. So yeah, any type of sequence can be created as well as the effect of creep, shrinkage, and age of concrete. Uh, which are all also called time dependent effects can also be incorporated in the construction stage analysis. Uh, the thing which I was talking about was the wizard modeling. So here we have various wizard models which are available, which we can uh, use to create a uh, different type of structure. So here various wizard options are available for us. So here, this is one is for RC frame or box culvert bridges. So we can, we just need to give the bridge layout as well as what are the loads as well as the boundary condition. And based on that, the program will automatically uh, generate the section for uh, the whole model for our bridge. Similarly, we have uh, one available for pre-stress composite bridge as well. So here, if we have a multi-girder system, high girder or box girder system, then uh, we can generate it using the scissors. Now, let me take you to the program where we can see how we can generate the model using wizard. So yeah, <clears throat> this is uh, the file which we'll be using. First, let me show you how we can uh, enter the license details. If you have any license detail, how we can enter that in the program. Okay, so first <clears throat> let me open the Medas file. So I have clicked on Medas civil icon on the desktop. And with that, this uh, uh, a new Medas file is open. Now, if you see here, here we have an icon called registration protection key, register protection key. So if you click on that, a new uh, window will open. So here, if you have web license, just click on that web license. Now, if you, you should have a user ID and password. 
So if you don't have a user ID and password, in that case, you need to go to create a new account. So this will take you to the Medas registration page where you can create your ID and password. Okay, so whatever ID and password which you're giving here, you should remember that because we will be using that ID and password to log in for your uh, uh, web or web license. Okay, so you need to enter your ID and password, and then you need to enter your protection key. So once you uh, take the license for Medasable, you will be provided with a protection key ID. So that protection key ID we need to enter here. And once we do that, we just need to press OK, and uh, your license um, licensing will be complete. Now, if you want to create a new file, now you want to create your module. For that, you can go to this Metas level icon, drop down, you can go to new project, or you can just directly click this small icon beside Metas level icon. So this will also open a new project. Okay, so this is how you can generate, you can enter your license detail and create a new file. So now here, uh, I will be using uh, this already defined created file. So here I have already defined few sections for my bridge. So you can see here, if I right click on that. So these are the material properties which we have defined. So to define material properties, uh, you can go to properties here in material properties. You can click on that and this new tab will open where you can go to add and add any type of material property. So here we have defined already defined few other properties so here I have selected concrete and here in country stand, concrete standard I can from drop down I can select any country code according to which I want to define the material properties okay and then here from drop down you will select uh, the grade of concrete or steel if uh, if you're defining for steel uh, which you want to use for design so here uh, I have used a concrete grade of P5060 press OK Okay, uh, like this, other material properties are also defined. Then, <clears throat> similarly, I have defined the time dependent material property. You need to give your grade of your concrete. <clears throat> and uh, what is the age, not age, sorry, uh, your grade and relative humidity. And notional size for now, uh, we will take a, a value of one meter. However, when we will define the section, those H values or notional size values will be updated based on your cross section details. Okay, once you are done with this, if you go to show result, you will see your creep coefficient graph as well as shrinkage strain graph. And based on this graph, uh, your section prop, uh, based, based on uh, this graph at whatever age, uh, the section uh, shrinkage strain and uh, Creep coefficient will be applied to your model and time dependent effects will be calculated at that particular age. Okay, so this is how time dependent materials are defined. Now, coming to the section properties. So, here I have defined various section properties. So, if I click on properties, so this is a PSC composite uh, section uh, which we have uh, created. Okay, so here these are the areas. Uh, which uh, the area and uh, the section properties. So here I have gone for composite general. So here you can directly import those from a file from AutoCAD. Uh, I can create a similar section property using the section properties tab. Here I can go to add and then I can go to uh, composite. Here from the drop down, I can select PSC composite. I Okay, and then I can uh, give the various inputs for those uh, sections. Okay, so this is the reference image according to which you can give your uh, input and this is your slab detail. Okay, based on this, you can create your section property. Okay, similarly, we can create for peer cap as well. We can create for peer section, which is a circular section. So any type of section can be defined here in Medas Civil. Okay. So here I have defined few tapered sections as well. So there will be 
as uh, there is a support section and there will be a mid section and there will be tapering between the support and mid section so this is the tapered section which we have created okay now to generate uh, the model so here we can go for uh, we can go to structure in structure we have various wizards available as i told you so here you can see uh, wizards are available for suspension bridge cable state bridge IL, which is incremental launching fcms free cantilever so you can see a lots of uh, wizards are available and these two wizards are for pre-stressed concrete and steel composite bridge so uh, we have a pre-stressed composite bridge so I will click on this. So a uh, wizard uh, will open. So I have already defined a wizard. So I'll just open that. Okay, so here you can see we have these five tabs uh, which we, in which we have to first, in first tab we have to define the layout. So in layout, you will define how many spans you have, what is your total deck width, what is the spacing uh, of your bearing to the end? So all these spacings and everything that you need to define. If you have curvature in your bridge, in that case, you can go for radius and you can define your uh, curvature. And not if you have multiple curvatures, so that also can be defined. So here uh, you need to uh, go for your multi-curve option and uh, define your multi-curve, okay? And then uh, if you have uh, your girder, uh, if you have skew in your uh, bridge, so in that case, you can go for your uh, skew as well. Okay, so, and then uh, for uh, a boundary substructure, we have an option to go for without substructure. In that case, that will be, the whole structure will be represented with a, a point spring or else if you go, want to go for a width substructure option. So in that case, the substructure will also be modeled. Okay, so yeah, we can go for this. Then here we can define the sections, uh, what sections we are using. Then over here, we don't want to go for radius. So I will check this off. And here we can go for tendon. So here I will have to give the input, like what is the offset. Uh, so if you want to see uh, the, yeah. So if you want to see the guide, how the uh, reference, uh, how the tendons are created. So here you need to just click on your curve tendon. So I have one for curve tendon profile. And then we need to give the input uh, as per the reference image shown here okay so based on that i have created these three tendon profiles okay and then we need to go for loading so what all lo what all loadings are coming on the bridge then here we can define the construction stages so here a construction sequence is already defined we just need to specify the ages so first the substructure will be activated then the girder then uh, deck uh, is activated then composite will uh, become then after composite load is activated and then long term effect a long term effect a stable effect so i will just and you can save uh, this wizard file so that we can use this wizard file again for some other bridge with just minute changes if you have any changes you can just change the wizard file and with that you can change the you can create the changed structure Okay, if I press OK, so you can see the whole uh, section is created. Now, if we go to stage one, so you can see fully your substructure is created. I'll just turn on the boundary condition. Okay, now in stage two, now only girders are activated, so there is no you can see there is no slab over the girder, only my girders and uh, diaphragm is activated. Okay, now if you go to stage three one, so in that case, uh, wet concrete load will be activated here. So if I go to loading, go to wet concrete, go to display. 
so you can see this wet concrete load has been activated that means the concrete has been poured okay however the section has not become composite uh, if you go to stage three two in that case the deck has become composite now section has become composite and then in stage four uh, now all the pre-stress load has and everything has been applied and in stage five this is the long term stage uh, to take in uh, to see the time dependent effects creep shrinkage uh, on the bridge Okay, so this is how uh, we can use various wizards to generate models. Similarly, we have for the steel composite, and uh, which is which can be used in a similar way. Similarly, we can create other bridges as well. So, a uh, wizard is a quite powerful option using which uh, it will save our time uh, in modeling, which we spend on modeling, and uh, we can create. Uh, suppose we have a standard structure, so that we can create quickly using the wizards okay so yeah so let's go back uh, to the presentation then uh, we have a wizard for rail track analysis model uh, so if you are dealing with railway projects in that case uh, as we know nowadays we are going for continuous weld rings so if you have a uh, uh, rails, uh, continuous rails over the bridge. In that case, there is interaction between deck and rail, and due to that, additional stresses are coming in the rail. So, take into account uh, those uh, stresses. We need to uh, perform rail track uh, analysis. So, for that, we have a special wizard that is available. So, yeah. So, using this, we can perform rail track analysis. Rail track analysis is uh, quite easily. Then uh, modeling modeling of uh, bridge soil interaction. So we have an option for uh, creating uh, springs for file based on certain soil properties. So we need just need to input certain soil properties, and based on that, the program will generate vertical as well as horizontal uh, spring stiffness, and the horizontal will be generated based on uh, the soil support and uh, force deformation curves will be generated and that will be assigned to the horizontal direction okay so this is uh, how we can simulate the effect of soil in the bridge now coming to the loading so all types of loads can be applied here mostly all types which are coming on the bridge so starting from self weight wind load thermal action earth pressure traffic load uh, then uh, dynamic loads, uh, accidental uh, loads, combination of actions, all these things can be created in the bridge. So uh, usually uh, the SIDL and all those loads are created using the element, element beam force. So uh, once we move to the program, uh, once we move sort of to demonstration, we will see all these applications. Then uh, we can go for a temperature gradient application as well as per uh, the Euro code. So whatever type of uh, uh, nonlinear temperature profile is given can be applied in Midas. Okay. Now coming to the moving load. So in Midas, uh, moving load is based on influence line approach. So uh, here we can also see the position of vehicle, which is causing the most critical effect. And not only this, we can perform this moving load analysis as per various country codes available. So suppose if you want to perform as per Euro code, so here we will see Euro code. And for Euro code, also various types of uh, vehicle, uh, vehicles are available. So we can perform as per uh, uh, rail, as per railway road, railway bridge, road bridge or footway footway bridge as well. Now coming to the analysis options. So uh, the analysis options which are available are so mostly all types of analysis starting from basic static analysis to dynamic pre-vibration response spectrum or time history analysis. Then we can go for geometric nonlinear analysis, material nonlinear analysis, uh, linear buckling analysis, heat transfer analysis, so usually we go for heat transfer and uh, heat of hydration analysis where 
we go for mass concreting such as dams or big uh, bridge projects. Then uh, we can go for a construction stage analysis uh, with uh, time dependent effects as well. Then column shortening analysis, inelastic and elastic. Then uh, if you want to go for a capacity design, in that case, we need to perform pushover analysis. So here we can perform pushover analysis as well. Then coming to boundary nonlinear time history analysis, inelastic time history analysis, and uh, other analysis such as unknown force, unknown load factor method, uh, which is used for finding uh, the force in cables uh, for a particular constraint, which is defined in cable state analysis, then moving load analysis and settlement analysis. Then a uh, seismic analysis of bridge can be performed either with response spectrum analysis. So here in the program, uh, various response spectrum codes are available as per various country codes. And uh, you know, we can select the country code according to which we perform to perform the response spectrum and with the certain parameters related to the spectrum or the design spectrum will be generated which can be used for analysis uh, we can also do time history analysis for that we need to have the time history uh, function for uh, that particular load and here in the database we have uh, around 40 major earthquake time history data available which we can, for which we can perform the time history analysis for our bridge. Then uh, coming to uh, the pushover analysis. So here uh, we can perform uh, detailed pushover analysis and uh, using the general section designer we can generate the moment curvature curve uh, and we can define the hinges and see the hinge failure pattern as well. Then coming to the output of result. So a wide range of outputs are uh, graphical outputs are available. So we can see normal shear force, bending moment reaction, shear force, bending moment for plate using plate cutting diagram and various stress contours uh, for uh, plates and solid elements. And whatever results that are with, uh, that we can see graphically are compatible with uh, can be seen in tabular format as well. And all these tables are compatible uh, with Excel as well, so that we can use it for post processing. Then uh, a pre-stress tendon, a pre-stress tendon loss can also be seen, and that can be seen in tabular as well as in graphical format for it, each step construction step and construction stage. Then as I have told you, moving load analysis is based on inference line approach. So with that, uh, we can see various critical positions of vehicle causing the effect. Then section, uh, in case of detailed bridge models, when deck and girders are approximated by plate or solid element program, can execute force diagrams like in section. For example, you can select the plate elements and describe and then define the cutting line diagram uh, using which uh, we can see the bending moment and shear force uh, diagram. So for engineers, the contour plots are not quite intuitive. We are more familiar with bending moment and shear force diagrams. And so that uh, Midas gives us the opportunity to see the bending moment and shear force diagram for plate elements. Then uh, we have this auto generation of load combination. So in the program, we can gener generate load combination as per various country codes. So here we need to select the design code according to which we want to generate the combinations. And then uh, we need to give the various factors and then Based on that, various combinations will be generated. Coming to the design features. So here design is available for various country codes for various types of section. So starting from PSC composite, reinforcement, reinforced concrete, structural steel, steel composite and SRC. And uh, these are the country codes uh, for which uh, the design is available. And these, um, there are few more, more country codes as well. So here we have mentioned only the relevant ones. 
and in design the output we have a detailed uh, PS, detailed excel report will be generated with reference to various country uh, various clause codal clauses as well so using which you can back verify uh, we back, back verify the results so it is quite detailed uh, once we go to demonstration i will show you the report Okay, so here, this is an example of PSC composite bridge, and this is the detailed report uh, which is generated. Similar uh, reports can be obtained for a steel and RCC design as well. So this is for steel composite bridge. Then for RCC members, you can define reinforcement and all, and based on that, you will get Design report. Now, uh, coming to the general section designer. So, here there might be sections. So, in Medal Civil, only regular section design is available for RC sections. Regular in the sense, only rectangular and circular section. And suppose if you have some section uh, which is shown like this. So in that case, uh, we can export uh, this section to general section designer where we can perform a detailed uh, stress check as per various country codes. OK, so here uh, we can select the country code. We can select the section and based on that, it will perform a detailed stress check here. Uh, a moment curvature curve can also be generated, which can be imported to Meda Civil. Uh, which can be further used for uh, hinge definition for pushover analysis. Another useful option which is available in the program is called dynamic report generator. So here uh, various images which are available in the program can be uh, images as well as tab tables uh, pertaining to bending moment, shear force, section properties. So tables and uh, images can be added uh, to a dynamic report which is nothing but a word document uh, it can be directly dragged and dropped from here uh, to the report and uh, we can use this report further uh, for submission purpose and if you have made any changes to your model so in that case uh, uh, we can just with a click of a button regenerate report and this regenerated report will have all the update updations that are done to the original model. So yeah, this is a quite useful feature. Now, um, the latest development that has been done uh, with respect to the assessment of bridge is uh, the application of CS454 code. Now, uh, in the program, uh, assessment of a bridge as per CS454 is available for PSC, PSC composite bridge. Uh, steel composite girder assessment is under development and it will be uh, coming in the later versions. Uh, currently, it is available for PSC, PSC composite girder for all model one as well as all model two. Now, coming to the demonstration part, so we will be doing a steel uh, PSC composite integral bridge. So, uh, this is the model which we are going to create. So here, uh, yeah, so uh, this is the model. Our span is 24 meters. So this is a single span PSC composite bridge. Depth of abutment is 3.3 to 5 meter, and a depth of pile is 10 meters. And this is the cross section of the girder, which we are going uh, to use. And uh, this is the longitudinal elevation. Now let me take you to the program and then uh, we will generate the model. Okay. Okay, so this is uh, the model uh, for which we will be creating our, um, we will be generating the bridge model. So yeah, this is the basic uh, GUI of the bridge. So this is the main ribbon menu as uh, I sh shared with you in the PPT as well. So this is the main ribbon menu where all the options are available uh, for uh, from starting from modeling 
to analysis and post processing and uh, here this is our tree menu one this is our tree menu two so whatever uh, operations that we do on the bridge are updated here so here i have already defined a few material properties and time dependent material properties as we did for the earlier model so the definition remains same here i have defined the section properties as well so here you can see this is the section property which we have defined now uh, we will create uh, the so this is the section property which we have defined so if you want to see the properties so you can just click on show calculation result and this is the section property okay now uh, we will create uh, our uh, bridge model so for that first let's see what are the units that we are going to use we are going to use kilonewton meter so to change the units you can go to tools here we have the unit system you can select your preferred unit system from here or you can directly change it from here at the top a uh, bottom a uh, right corner so here you can select what uh, units you want so i will be going with kilonewton meter okay so now uh our section properties and material properties are created now the first thing that we will do is create a node so for creating a node we need to go to nodes and elements here we have this create node tab so i will click on this and here in the tree menu a new um, option will open so here to create the node you can define the coordinates where you want to create the node and then just apply and once you apply you can see a node has been created so this is these are the various select options that are available in the program so this is a single select this is window select so this window select is similar to the one in autocad so whatever comes inside the window when i swipe from right to from left to right whatever comes inside the window will be selected and whatever if we slide from right to left right to left in that case whatever the window intersects will be selected okay so here you can see a single node has been created now i will use this node to create uh, my whole girder okay so for that i will just select this node on the girder and then i will go to this extrude option so here you can see in this extrude option here uh, what extrude means we can convert uh, uh, we can just extend uh, the if i want to extrude i can extrude a node into line element a line into plate element a plate into solid element so here i'm using this node to create a line element so extrude type i will select node uh, node to line element and then uh, section element type i can go for truss beam tension and compression i will go for beam element okay and then uh, material i will select c4050 and here i will select mid section okay and the total span of my bridge is 24 meters so here i will select one meter and i will do it 24 times okay and then i will just apply so here you can see a girder has been created for me okay now i will copy this girder as i have uh, four girders so i will just copy this girder four times three times more okay so for that i will select this and just turn off the hidden option and for that i will use this translate command okay so i will translate this use copy option and translate this in y direction okay three times by three meters and three times and i will go for intersect node element option and then apply so now if i see the extrude view so now you can see my girders are created okay now 
just turn on the node numbers. Okay, now I will create uh, the diaphragm for my bridge. So for that, I will go to create element. Here, I will select a general beam and uh, the material I will select C3545. From drop down, I will select diaphragm. Okay, and then I will select the nose. So this is the first diaphragm which I have to create. Then let's close this. Now I need my diaphragm location here is at the center of this element. So for that, I need a node at the center. So for that, I will use this divide element. Okay. And then I will go to the select option and I will select this element and I will divide it into two parts. Okay. As well as I want to divide this as well. And select these both and then apply. So now you can see it is divided here at this location. I will turn on this node number and then I will again go to create element and uh, here from drop down I will select diaphragm and then sorry I have to apply these nodes here. Okay. Similarly on this side. Okay, so now you can see these diaphragms are created. Okay, now I want to create uh, the dummy slab elements for my bridge. So for that, what I will do, I will select these nodes. Okay, and then translate Uh, then, so for that, I will use translate node option. Okay, and then translate them with minus 1.5. Okay, so I will translate them with minus 1.5 and one time. So now you can see here, these nodes are created here. Now I will use this, these nodes to create the cross beams okay so i will use this and then again i will go to extrude command and from the drop down here i will select dummy slab so dummy slab is my slab section dummy okay then i will go to unequal distance in y direction and here input i will give first i want 1.5 meter and then three times at the rate three meters and then again 1.5 meters okay, and then once i apply so now you can see uh, this cross section this whole uh, superstructure has been created now i will go to hidden option Okay, now if I turn on the load number, okay, now I will, I, ha I have a dummy crash barrier here. So for that, I will go to create element and here I will select dummy and again dummy and then I will just create element. Select the first and last node. And here also first and last. Okay, so this is how my superstructure has been created. Okay, now I have to create uh, the substructure for my case, for my bridge. Okay, so for that, what I will do, I need uh, these nodes for using which I will create uh, my substructure. So I will just select these nodes here. 
Similarly, on the other side, okay. Then I will go to translate nodes and then copy and in unequal distance in Z direction. I want to copy it to at the rate minus 1.1625 and one time and one meter. Okay. Now once I do this and then press OK. So now Sorry, this is incorrect. I will go to select previous again. So now these nodes are selected again. I will give the input to at the rate 1.1625 and two times at the rate one. Okay. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, I made a mistake here. This has to be minus one. I have given it one. So that's why this is happening. So here this has to be minus one. And again, I will go to select previous. Okay, so the nodes are selected. Now I will apply. Okay, so now it has been created properly. Now I have to create a And uh, this bottom row I don't need. So this is 3.3 to 5 only. So this I will delete. Now I need to create the plate elements uh, for my uh, structure. So first I will go to create element. Here I will go select plate and uh, C3545. And plate element is 1.2. Okay, so here. I will just select. Okay, similarly on the other side. Okay, so yeah, so this is how uh, my uh, uh, plate, so if I see the extruded view, so this is the abutment plates. Now I will create um, I will just again, I have to create the pile uh, elements. So for that, uh, I will use these nodes to create the pile. Okay, so for, again, for that, I will use this extrude command. And here, 
I will use the file section and then in DZ direction by minus one and 10 times. I will select uh, these nodes here. Three, four. Similarly, on the other side. and then just apply okay so this is how uh, my substructure uh, has also been created so this is the basic uh, structure for a uh, uh, integral bridge now uh, i have to provide supports so first let's create the boundary condition for pile so for that we have this integral bridge option where we can create pile strings based on soil uh, soil data so here let's consider uh, sand uh, sandy soil and then i need to give the ground uh, level of ground so here let's consider the top of pile as my ground level so here minus 3.325 will be the ground level pile diameter which we have considered as one meter let's take the unit weight as 19 and uh, earth pressure coefficient at rest as 0.4 Modulus of subgrade reaction, let's consider 30,000. Okay, and yeah. Um, I'll just select my elements, pile elements here, as well as here, and then just apply. Okay, so now you can see my pile uh, soil springs are applied. And suppose if you have an end bearing pile, so I can provide an end bearing support as well. So for that, I will go to define support. Support is fixed at bottom, provide fixed. Okay, so this is how uh, different, uh, this is how we can apply the loads, uh, sorry, support condition. Now coming to the loading. So here, to go to static load, here into define static load cases. So suppose I have self weight. Sorry, here I need to go. I have uh, currently I have not defined construction stages, but we need to define construction stages for uh, integral bridge. Then we have pre stress. If you have SIDL, so we can select SIDL as well. Okay. Okay, similarly, other loads can also be added. So first, if you want to create self weight, so here in bed direction, minus one, then apply. Okay, and then uh, suppose now, if you want to apply pre-stress, so for that, you need to go to temperature pre-stress, and it can be applied in three steps. First, we need to create a tendon property. So here, we have already created a tendon property. Then, uh, next, we have to define the tendon profile, and uh, that can be easily done uh, using a tendon template option, which is available in the uh, which is available in the program. So, uh, for that, first uh, we need to go to yeah. So, for that, you need to go to structure. Here in PSC Bridge, we have this tendon template option. So here I will only select my mid sections to which I want to apply the free stress. So I will click on that. Okay, go to top. Now let's name it tendon. Okay, I will add my just turn on the hidden option. Just select. my sections to which i want to apply pre-stress okay and then i need to just define the profile uh, so suppose i have a straight tendon uh, in plan and in elevation i have curved tendon so here i have selected so from drop down you can select what type of curved tendon you have and then you just need to specify your various inputs here so suppose I have uh, this 0.925, H will be 12, and uh, 
b will be 0 0.326 and t1 is also 0.925 okay okay similarly i have four tendon profiles for each uh, each girder so again here i will select uh, my curved pole and here t1 is uh, 1.4 and b is 0.125 and T dash is also 1.4. Okay, you can see how your trending will look in this reference image. Okay. Similarly, I have this third one. Here T is 1.3 in plan. Sorry. This was entered by mistake. Just cancel this and again enter. <coughs> 1.3. Okay. And this is curved as well. And uh, here T1 is 1.725. This is 0.125. This is again 1.725. Similarly, my last profile here, this is 1.7. And this is again point. Here, this is 1.725. Okay. So, like this, I have defined my all four tendons. You can see now let's apply this on my bridge. That's okay. Now, if you can see these tendon profiles have been applied to your bridge. So if you see, yeah, okay, like this, you can apply your tendon profile, okay? So uh, using the tendon plan template, it becomes quite easy to define uh, these tendon profiles, okay? Now I will just activate all. Similarly, we can define our moving load as well. So for that, first I need to make a cross girder uh, 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 structure group. So for that, I will select dummy slab and then create a group dummy cross beam. Okay. So with that, these elements will be created. Now create for creating moving load, I will go to load, moving load. So here I need to specify uh, according to which country code I need to perform the analysis. Then I need to define traffic line lanes. So here I will turn on the hidden option. Okay. To add, suppose uh, for this bridge, we will have three lanes uh, for. Uh, so here I will select dummy cross beam. Then I need to select my reference elements and my eccentricity here will be minus 1.5. So this eccentricity is decided based on this reference image here. So my lane has to be on the upper side. So that's why I'm going with negative eccentricity. Here, what I will do, I will activate only my superstructure. So it will, there will be less confusion for me. Okay, so now, here, let me select the two points. Press OK. See, so here my lane one is created. Similarly, I can add lane two. Here, my eccentricity will be minus 4.5. Okay. Again, here, cross beam to be selected. Okay. And similarly, the third lane I can define. 
here eccentricity is minus 7.5. Okay, so this is how uh, we can define the moving load uh, lanes. Similarly, I need to define a remaining area lane on either side, which I have not defined now. And then uh, we can add the moving load vehicle after defining the lanes. So here uh, we will select uh, type depending on type of bridge. Suppose we have road bridge. So here I, I, I want to run load model one and load model three. So here from drop down, I will select load model one first, and then uh, I will select load model three. Okay. So here from uh, this uh, vehicle, I can select any type of vehicle. So suppose I'm going for SV196, then I will close. Then coming to moving load cases. So here I will define first where only ln1 is used so here i will select all the lanes press ok and then the another case where lm1 and ln3 are straddling okay so here and straddling will be between lane 1 2 and lane 2 3 okay uh, so this will be mlc2 so yeah, this is how a moving load can be defined. So here construction states I have now defined due to the less time we have. So here I have already defined one model where uh, we have defined all everything. So here remaining area is also defined. So I'll just display that. So you can see here. So all lanes plus remaining area is defined. Load moving load case is different, the same. And here I have defined construction stages as well. So here, if I turn on my boundary conditions, so here all the boundary conditions are active. And in stage two, only my girders are placed. And in stage three, my wet concrete load has been applied. That means, uh, uh, the concrete has been poured and then in stage four uh, the sections become composite and stage five is a long-term stage for time dependent effects okay and then we have this post yes so i have already performed uh, the analysis uh, for this bridge so now if you want to see the bending moment diagrams here Okay, so here I have pre-stressing. So suppose only for dead load if you want to see. So for dead load, uh, you can see. I will just turn on the... So in stage one, uh, only due to dead load is 1300 kilonewton maximum. And then if you, you have done pre-stressing also. So for that, I am getting 652. 530 5335 kilonewton upward uh, bending moment and if you see the summation so you are getting around yeah so for summation is around 3972 kilonewton meter bending moment similarly then we have cs3 when wet concrete load has also been applied i will undisplay that okay and then in CS, CS4, so at this point, uh, my section has become composite now. So, so due to dead load, so now you can see a uh, hogging moment has started coming. So now at this point, so one thing we need to note here is uh, when my girder is coming, so there is no hogging moment. And as at this point, the, the section has not become composite. The section will become composite when the diaphragm has been the slab and diaphragm are uh, poured and it becomes composite so at this stage the section has become composite now whatever load has been applied after this point the composite action and integral action will take place okay so the st structure will become integral in stage four now if you see the moving load result in post cs 
just good post yes okay so here i have other loads as well so first let's see for moving load so i will turn on turn off this display here so this is the maximum and this is minimum just coming at the suppose okay and if you see all it will have maximum as well as minimum so uh, let's see at what location we are getting that maximum effect we are getting at 12 element number 12 so for that we will go to load solid result moving load tracer deep force moment where i will 12 and moment okay so let's see the position of vehicle so this is the position of vehicle this which is causing the maximum uh, bending moment similarly i can see for other components as well and i can convert uh, this position into a static load as well okay and then uh, like this i can uh, see the moving load results now coming to the design aspect so for design we have psc dedicated special dedicated tab here uh, we can define uh, the PSC materials. Uh, uh, we can define the design parameters and then specify your design material and then position for design and output. And then if you have composite in that case, shear connector exposure class, and then you can perform the design. Okay, so I have already, and then we can generate the Excel report. And for load combinations here, we can go for auto load combination. So here, if you go to auto generation, here we can select the country code according to which we want to perform the design and then select the factors and just press OK. These auto load combinations will be generated. Then in results, we can directly go to perform design and Excel report. So here I have already generated the Excel report for this case, which I like to show you. Okay, so this is the Excel report which is generated for this case. This is the reinforcement which we have provided for this section, and this is the pre stressing that is coming in the section. Okay, and you can see this is quite detailed. A codal references are also given for each and every calculation which is performed. Okay, so first the neutral axis depth uh, iterations are performed, and when, once T is equal to T, the iterations are stopped, and this is the calculation for that neutral axis. Similarly, for negative moment as well, the check is performed, and then shear reinforce, shear resistance, and then shear force and torsional check. Okay, and then stress check. So, like this, we have a repenting resistance shear resistance, torsion resistance, and tendon stress summary. Okay, so this is how design can be performed here. Then uh, the latest development is with respect to the rating, uh, the assessment as per CS454. So for that, you just need to specify your design code, assessment code parameters, your load combinations for assessment. So you need to define uh, what load combination you want to have. And then here you can select the moving load. And then uh, you just need to perform the assessment. So I have already performed assessment uh, for one element, which is element number 78, for which I'm showing you the result. So here also it is quite detailed. Same uh, flexion resistance check. Uh, and then shear reinforcement, shear resistance, and torsional design check. So like this, uh, all the thing, design and assessment can be carried out in Medasi. So yeah, this was uh, the introduction to Medas Civil uh, from my end. Now, if you have any questions uh, related to this, uh, kindly let us know.
okay so There are a few questions that have been asked by many users. So I will not be able to answer all of them, but uh, yeah, I will answer a few of them. So uh, yeah, one question has is, has been raised is, does Meta Civil has predefined uh, loading for CS454, all mo ALL model one and ALL model two? So yes, uh, Meta Civil has uh, predefined uh, loading for all model one and all model two for that uh, we need to uh, go with uh, uh, bs code so i will i will just need to select bs code here so I, my analysis will be done in that case and then here in vehicles uh, we need to select CS454 from the drop down, and then we can add all model one and all model two vehicles, and then we can run the analysis. And based on the analysis, we can also perform the assessment. Then uh, another question is Yeah, in case of curved decks, are the results shown in terms of cylindrical coordinate system? No. Uh, so basically, when uh, when we go for element results, those element results are shown in global coordinate system, which is uh, the x, y, z. Uh, so a longitudinal is x direction. Uh, but it, sorry, uh, when we go for uh, uh, element results, element results are shown in local coordinate system. So I'll just turn on the local coordinate system of an element. So if you see here, I can turn on the local axis. So whatever element results we are getting, those we will be getting along this axis. However, when we go, uh, so in element results, we have bending moment, shear force, and other result. However, when we go for nodal results, such as uh, <clears throat> the uh, reactions, uh, per se, deformations, so all those we will get in global coordinate system, which is shown here, X, Y, and uh, Z in the upward direction. However, in case of curved decks, uh, so our, uh, in case of curved decks, uh, our properties, suppose uh, my bearings and all those things and my reactions, I need in the direction of my curvature. So for that, that case, we can add a uh, node local access to a particular load. And for, uh, for links, we can add beta angle, and then we can view the results. Uh, then there is one question. Can we put reinforcement uh, for model like shear and longitudinal reinforcement before analyzing? yes uh, we can do that so if you can i didn't show that in the presentation but here uh, we have gone for uh, uh, reinforcement uh, in our section so that reinforcement we can uh, uh, apply by going to properties uh, here in section manager you have this reinforcement tab so once you go there so here in this mid section we can add the reinforcement so here we can go for a multi-add uh, where we can add in, in a table format, tabular format, or we can go and add in uh, the graphical format as well. So here we can select for which part we are applying the reinforcement, part one being my girder and part two being my slab, and then I can apply the reinforcement. And uh, continuation to that question, uh, can we find the result for deflection? Yeah, we can find the result for deflection. Uh, I think in the presentation we have covered that. I will turn off these local axes. Yes. Then. So yeah, there have been many requests regarding the recording for the session. So yeah, we will be I think we will be uploading this recording on YouTube and 
uh, if possible, we will share the link with you guys. And yeah, there is one question. Once stand-in is created, can we use the wizard for PS, uh, PSC, I think, tendon profile for correction, update, etc. of the tendon? So uh, how we can do this is uh, we can recreate the same tendon. So uh, one way is like we have the tendons uh, which we have defined. So what we can do either we can from uh, this coordinate system. So by using the tendon template, it will create uh, your tendon profile similar to this. So we can modify our tendon profile using this. D. So you can I can change these values and my tendon profile will be updated or else uh, the other way would be to again go to structure and again go to psc sorry again go to psc tendon template and uh, redefine uh, your tendon profiles Uh -huh. So there is one good question that has been raised. Which age of the concrete is uh, leading in the composite section for construct construction stages or uh, the age input in the CS? So here you can see uh, we have two definitions. One, we have construction stage definition where we define the age of the element. So here I have given the girder age as 14 days. And then uh, we have a composite section for construction stages age. So here, if you see, we have uh, defined the age. Uh, here also we have defined the age of our member. So here, part one age is 14 days and part two age is uh, 14 days. So whenever composite section for construction stages are de defined, so whatever age is defined in composite section for construction stages, this age will overrule the age defined in construction stages okay so whatever definition we have done in composite section for construction stages that age will be considered for your member at the time of activation can we provide stirrups in girder sections yeah so we can provide shear reinforcement for our girder section so here if we go to section manager so here we have this shear reinforcement tab. So here we can define uh, our diagonal reinforcement, which is shear reinforcement instead of self. Okay, so this was about our today's presentation. Thank you all for attending and thanks all for your time. I hope it was a helpful session. In uh, case of any other queries, kindly log on to Midas uh, uh, Global Support at MidasIT.com. So we will answer to all the queries there. Uh, thank you all for attending. Uh, have a great day.